let's take a look at torch package in our language so basically this is a package that is derived from pytorch which is used for gpu computation and machine learning and deep learning so basically this package that we are going to install is named as torch and there is also one more package that goes with it which is torch vision right to install that we can use one of these two methods so we can search for torch within our r studio and search for that it seems like it's not finding it so what we will do is instead of that we'll simply use install packages and then we will simply pass on torch right then hit enter it should search for that particular package install it and as you can see it's trying to find various packages right now it says the downloaded binary packages are in this particular folder now next thing is install packages and then we go for torch vision and hit enter it should go through same process finding all those files downloading them and it will show you whether it's available or not so here you see once installed you would find it's available within this so if you want to install instead of just searching through it you can also click on install here and check for package Okay, that's second method which I forgot to mention, right? So this goes for installation of our Torch and Torch Vision library. Now let's clear console, and what we will do is we will call for library, and then our package which is Torch, right? So it's available. As you can see, it will download CPU specific package before we get to now. Once installed, we can also check whether Torch Vision can be called as well. So, library Torch Vision hit enter. So, both of them are now accessible. So, what we will do is we will try to create tensor with them. So, let's just clear the console now. Let's go for let's say to create a tensor we will use torch underscore tensor right and now what we will do is pass some data to it it's so one two three and we have our tensor ready and if you use x we can see torch sense tensor giving us the output and also it shows you it's of flow type 3 right so now what we can do is we can also check whether we can convert our regular matrix into tensor so to do that what we'll do is let's say if i create a matrix right and within that let's use run if and for that we will pass six and then we will also use n row set to two right so we have the matrix and then we have to convert that matrix into a tensor so what we'll do is we'll use torch tensor and then pass our matrix to it and here you see if we push for x it should show you the value of our tensor based out of the conversion from our matrix and it's two by three that is also shown in the output right similarly we can also convert our arrays into tensor so to do that let's see if I create array so what I will do is array and what if I use run if and pass on 12 dimension equals to C and then 232 two, right and if I want to convert this 
right into torch tensor right and we simply pass on our array to it right and if we get the value of x we get our tensor in return so we managed to create a tensor we also converted matrix into tensor also converted array into tensor so we will take a look at some of the other parts as well now let's try to find out how you can get tensor attributes so let me clear this now now let's take a look at how you can access tensor attributes so first thing let's create one tensor so torch underscore random number and two by two of value let's see okay so this generates some tensor for us and if we try to get let's say the type for this it shows float what if we try to get device it says cpu and we have not set it up for gpu so another thing is x then dollar sign shape 2 by 2 as you can see basically run n function takes the arguments and creates 2 by 2 matrix which in our case uh, the torch would convert into tensor right so let's see what further we can do with this there is one more thing that we can do which is saving and loading and unloading our tensor data right so let's take a look at that now here let's first create some tensor with random function right so 10 by 10 we created and if we try to save this we can use torch underscore save right and for that we will simply take x as our one of the argument and save it as tensor.pt right so that's saved and if you want to load this into another tensor you can go for torch underscore load and then we basically call this tensor.pt into it so that will load the values from the x into our new one as well now what if i want to get rid of both these x and y can use torch underscore all clothes okay as you can see here it should show the option of cell further right and all clothes will happen so x and y all clothes right it says true right so you get the idea how to save and load tensor using this okay so one more thing we can check while we are at it let's see if CUDA underscore is available right so considering we are on CPU it should uh, save also something like that right so it's false there is also CUDA device count so CUDA underscore device count right so let's he there is zero similarly few more functions CUDA get device CUDA is available is already used then current device returns the current device minus one so CUDA support not available so it should give you that output let's see runtime version CUDA device that is only supported in CUDA runtime considering we are not even supported none of these functions would return anything positive so that's one of these things now few more things we can do is we can also work with our tensor for indexing and slicing or even let's say doing some operations like subtraction and also conversion into array etc so we will take a look at that 
now let's take a look at some of the other operations that we can do with the tensor and here first we will take a look at how to index tensor then we will see how to access those element and also we will take a look at subtraction operation and converting from tensor to array okay so first thing let's create an a uh, tensor with torch right then underscore tensor and we pass on value right so one to five and then we can see the value of x here you see next is we want to access its element particularly let's say one so we will do that and here you see one similarly if you want to access the last element you can do so by minus one right third being uh, we can access first three elements right uh, let's see from one to three right and we got first three similarly last two if you want so minus two sorry minus two to n right so if we do that okay sorry okay so instead of comma we have to use colon so sorry about that let me clear this so let's go with x minus 2 colon n right and we got last two elements right so this is about indexing and accessing those elements individually similarly we can also do array operation so we will clear the console now here what we will do is we will try to create some values for our tensor dot underscore tensor and then pass in one to five to it right and then we will try to also uh, sub subtract values by using torch uh, underscore it should be right so dot underscore sub is the function that will take our x and subtract one from it right and you can see the output our one to five has done zero then two minus one one and so on right so we got the subtraction operation similarly we can do one more thing which is uh, we can also take a look at tensor data type conversion so let's say x is basically your torch and run n 10 by 10 right and if we run this we have some values as you can see here right so let's clear the console go back to the top and here let's add another tensor into this and here we will call for 2 and then uh, we basically go for uh, data type of let's say d type equals to let's say torch underscore and here we have to find integer 32 so let's see if we have that g integer 32 okay and integer 32 so we have that right so if i run this okay and use an argument okay sorry it is mistake of typo so d type right then hit enter and if we run y we get our y tensor from our x which is now converted into integer 32 so previously as you can see it was of float type which got converted into integer 32 now we can also download the training and test data for torch so to do that let's go with train ds which is for data set so what we will do is we will call game 
ns data set which is from torch vision right so inside that what we will do is we will simply first go ahead with specifying download set to true then we will also go with let's see train which is going to be true because it is train data set right so this is for training and another one should be for testing so at that time this train should be set to false then we also want to transform this to let's say transform to tensor so transform underscore to tensor right so that's one thing right right and now if we hit enter it will download that and then we will also do the same for test data set now that your training data set is downloaded next is going for testing data set so let's go with that by typing in test ts then we will type to get this chemist data set and inside which we will try to set the download to true then we will also have to check the train to false then we have to work on transform which is basically converting this testing set to tensor so transform underscore two which is going to be reference to tensor right and if we hit enter it should download as well and then next part would be loading this train and test data set right so what we can do is train data loader and it should be for data loader and within that we will call for train ds right and then we will go for match size set to let's say 32 right and then shuffle set to true right let's hit enter and we have our training data set data loader now let's go and do the same for testl data loader and here we will go for test yes right here batch underscore size we set to 32 right no need for shuffle here and we have our uh, torch training and test data downloaded along with its data loader set as well so further we can go ahead and do the further computation using this so this is pretty much the basic parts of most of the operations that we can do typically with torch library you can extend this further based on your requirements